For my generation, Shakespeare in the movies really began with Laurence Olivier. First with his adaptation of Henry V, then with his late 1940s version of Hamlet, which moved and felt like a film noir, and then with his glorious version of Richard III, which is a particular favorite. Olivier played the title role brilliantly, and he uh, co-starred with some of the finest actors of his time, including Ralph Richardson, John Gielgud, Claire Bloom, and Sir Cedric Hardwick. I saw this film originally when I was 13, and I vividly remember my, my first encounter with the incredible beauty and the clarity of its VistaVision images. We felt like we had stepped into a medieval book of ours. Over the years, Richard III was substantially cut on more than one occasion. Uh, the original version, which ran 161 minutes, premiered in London in 1955. It was shortened for its United States release in 1956. The producer, Alexander Korda, took the unprecedented step at the time of premiering the picture in the U.S. theaters and on the same day on NBC television, where most people saw it in black and white. I saw it in black and white first, actually. In the mid-60s, the picture was re-released with another 20 minutes removed. All the longer cuts disappeared from distribution until the 1980s when Romulus Films undertook a photochemical restoration, which was a major accomplishment at the time. They restored most of the missing material, but they had to use dupe source material in the process of doing it. Several years ago, when this preservation element and the original VistaVision negative were inspected, they both showed signs of major color fading, and we knew it was critical to restore the film from the original camera negative, utilizing up-to-date digital technology to repair damage and improve the image quality. The VistaVision format posed a special challenge for the restoration. VistaVision was created in 1954 by Paramount Pictures. It was a flat widescreen system in which the 35 millimeter negative ran through the camera horizontally rather than vertically in order to utilize the larger eight perforation area. In other words, an image the size of two regular frames, which gives you a much sharper image. There are few labs that can digitally scan the VistaVision format. Uh, restoration specialist Grover Crisp worked with Scenaric Labs in New York to scan the negative on a specially adapted wet-gate Oxbury scanner. Scanning the full VistaVision frame allowed you to see the complete VistaVision image for the first time since the original elements were reduced to the standard 35mm release prints. And you could see here the additional image area that is now visible. If you will hear me name it. Some dungeon. <laughs> Your bedchamber. <laughs> Are now good people with your holy load. In paradisum, in the as the original camera negative had been cut down to create the shorter versions, the original version had to be recreated from the best surviving elements. Scenarics archivist Tom Heitman painstakingly analyzed and compared various elements, including the truncated camera negative. Now, the longest element found was a 35 millimeter soundtrack master print that appeared to be the, quote, premier version, unquote. Uh, using that as a guide, the sequences missing from the camera negative were identified. Most of the deleted footage was found within 300 film cans or canisters of original negative trims that had been stored for years at the BFI National Archive. And this cut material was scanned and then reinserted digitally. Approximately 100 shots that had been cut from the original cut negative were replaced. Now, since the film has fewer than 500 shots overall, this was a major step in reconstituting Olivier's original cut with vastly improved image quality over what had ever been seen before. There were over three dozen sections in which frames were lost from the cuts made years ago to the VistaVision negative. As you can see in this next scene, 
Missing frames have been restored to the picture digitally, morphing surrounding frames with motion compensation, replacing the missing picture information to eliminate jump cuts in the negative. Why so? Why so? There was severe and intermittent chemical staining, which posed a particularly difficult challenge. In this section, you can see the raw scanned image. The damage became much more visible during the color grading process. In this demonstration, you can see the staining clearly and then the repaired image. I hope he is much grown since last I saw him. But I hear no. They say my son of York hath almost overtaken him in his growth. Now this demonstration shows the different degrees of color fading in the negative, which is seen here as a raw, uncorrected scan on the left of the screen. This sequence from the end of the film contained different locations and film stocks, which were processed at different times, so the fading varied from shot to shot, which required meticulous adjustments. You can see the color variation when you compare the studio-based shots, like these, to the location shots, which you can see here in the wide shot. One of the primary goals for this restoration was to digitally restore the color and make these sequences play as smoothly and seamlessly from shot to shot as possible. This next sequence demonstrates that the negative also had significant color breathing, or flicker, which was digitally improved. Who in my rage kneeled at my feet and bade me be advised? Who spake of brotherhood? Who spake of love? Who told me how the poor soul did forsake the mighty Warwick and did fight for me? Who told me in the field by Dukesbury? When Warwick had me down, he rescued me. The sound was restored in the original mono format from the 1955 Master Track Positive. And as used for the first time, this element provided high quality sound superior to what had been available in the past. This major restoration would not have been possible without generous funding from the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. Thanks to their support and commitment, Richard III can now be seen and experienced once again as Laurence Olivier intended.